That's it. I can't keep quiet anymore. There are some things in this hobby that really annoy me. Welcome back to another video. This really popped when I saw it. That to me is a monster increase. Again, this book got hot. This book is ready to go higher. So let's jump right into it. We are back today with another statue review from Diamond Select Toys. Without further ado, let's get into the review. What is going on YouTube? This is Lawrence over at Money Comics and Collectibles and I want to thank you guys out there for joining me for another video here on the channel. Today's topic, seven things that really annoy me about this hobby. We all have our little quirks. You're going to find out mine here today. But before we get started in the video, like always, I remind you guys, if you're not a current sub of the channel, do yourself a favor, hit that sub button. You will not regret it. I'm giving away two awesome things once we hit 7,000 subs and we are almost there. With that said, do me a favor and hit that like button. It really does help the channel out and if you're not following me on instagram or on twitter also click the links below with that said let's get into this video we're going to start off at number seven it is storing your comic books this can be a huge issue for a lot of us in the community to me i don't really have a ton of stuff but the big issue is i like to look at my books you can see my raw wall i like to display my books my raw books of course you've seen the big case behind me with some of my bigger slabs i also have a new smaller case that i'm filling up as we go along but regardless storing a lot of comics can be a huge issue and it really annoys me i know people out there have upwards of 35 to 50 000 comics in their collection they're jeans not a chandelier i couldn't even imagine storing these books you have to pay a monthly fee to probably store them in a storage unit maybe you have the space in your home to put all these books to me i don't so storing comics is a big issue for me i have this tiny little room that i work in here so keeping a lot of comics is is a no-go i just can't do it right guys so storing comics really annoys the crap out of me because i really want i want to look at my books but also i just don't have the room at the sixth spot on the things that really annoy me about this hobby, of course, is the cost to grade comic books. Now, you guys know here on the channel, I'm not really sending things in to be graded anymore. And that's partially due because of the fact that it really costs a ton of money to have books graded. Now, way back when, about seven years ago, when I got back into this hobby, the cost of books were a lot less and the cost of grading was also less. So I could send a ton of books in to get them graded for a great deal. Now, it's not like that anymore. Using CGC's guidelines, you guys know I don't really collect modern books, but $25 is really not that bad to send in a modern book, but going into vintage, anything under $400, I really don't want to grade anyway, but it costs $40. Anything over $1,000 costs $85 as it stands right now to grade with CGC. And we're not even including shipping there, shipping back, and insurance, guys. It's just way too much money to spend to send things in to be graded, especially when you're collecting high dollar value books if you're buying raw. If you're buying slabs already, then it really doesn't matter. But for me, the cost of grading has gotten out of control, and I just don't want to spend the money anymore. But let me know what you think down in the comments. Does the cost of grading really annoy you like it annoys me? At number five of the things that really annoy me about this hobby is probably a contentious topic right now in the community. It is the 9.9 .9 grade. Now, to me personally, I think a 9.9 .9 grade is just a money grab and a scam by the grading companies. That's just me because we started off way back when when grading first started going from a 9.0 to a 9.2 to a 9.4 to a 9.6 and then to a 9.8 and a gem mint. Yes, they did have a 9.9 .9 thrown in there, but what is the point of having a 9.9 .9 grade if everything is going by 0.2 along the way right a 9.0 9.2 just like i was saying it really makes no sense unless it is a money grab what is the difference between a 9.8 and a 9.9 .9? we know cgc just put out a video about this but they're using modern books that were just sent to them from the manufacturer now tell me this then whose kitty litter did i just shit in you guys know a lot of people out there, we collect vintage books and probably not a lot of 9.9s or even 9.8s capable in the vintage books. But I gotta be honest, even in 9.9 .9 modern books, isn't it just a scam? Now they're talking about possibly doing a 9.9 .9 pre-screen so they can get all those 9.8s sent back in to pre-screen for a 9.9. .9. They want all those books back in for grading again so they can make profit off those books. That's just my two cents. I know 9.9s are scarce, but they're gonna get a lot more in demand and a lot more people are going to own 9.9s driving down the value of course of 9.8s and also current 9.9s as more hit the census again another topic people don't want to talk about but the 9.9 .9 is definitely a scam 
All right, so coming in at number four is another thing that really grinds my gears. It is actually grading modern comic books. Now, to me, if a book just came out last week and it's already in the process of being graded, what are we doing? You're telling me you only want to buy books and send books in to be graded just for the grade and not for the actual books. There are very few modern books out there that are worth a ton of money that are important historically in comics, in my opinion. Very, very few. With that said, if you're buying books off the rack and sending them in to be graded in the next week, you don't really love comics you love the grade and the value of that book right now. Again, it's all about flipping books. It's all about saying, hey, I have a 9.8. Hey, I love modern books because this is what I can afford. And I'm not saying that's bad, but you're taking all this money. You're sending all these books off to CGC. You're spending $25 per book to be graded. Think of what you could spend that money on if you really loved a vintage character. Now, I'm not saying what you do is wrong. I'm just saying for me, that's kind of annoying. I don't see the value in doing that and people collect their own different ways to each his own. All right, at the three spot is Deceptive Sellers. You guys know what that means. It could be your LCS. It could be your comic book dealer friend. It could be your own community member that you know. And it could be also comic dealers when we go to a show. Deceptive Sellers, and what I mean by this, is people who pass off books for higher grades, people who don't disclose restoration on comic books or missing pieces or anything that should be told about a comic book when you're selling it. Deceptive Sellers are absolutely the worst. They're scammers. They're just trying to get money out of people, and they don't care about the consequences. I could tell you a few stories of me going to certain cons and seeing dealers with some massive keys on the walls. We're talking Journey into Mystery 83s, Amazing Fantasy 15s, and I asked the guy, pure as day, is there any restoration on this book? And he said no, and of course, I'm flipping through the book and I could see it myself. So with that said, deceptive sellers are everywhere and you have to be really careful, and it's one of the biggest things that annoys me about our community. If you are a seller and you do sell comic books, please be upfront with all your books. It is just the way to go. It is the right thing to do. Now, at number two, we have another thing that's probably going to piss a lot of people off, but I'm going to say it anyway. What annoys me is when people buy the wrong comic books. Now, before you go jump down my throat, let me explain a little bit. See, I see a lot of people out there buying modern books and trying to flip them and get nine eights. I see a lot of people buying foil variants. I see a lot of people buying exclusive stuff like that, a lot of run filler, and they're not buying keys. And they wonder 20 years down the line or even 10 to five years down the line when they go to sell this stuff, why am I only getting a tenth of the value of what I paid? It's because people don't want to own these books in the long term. They're jeans, not a chandelier. They're filler. They're books that don't have any meaning in the community. So if you're a key collector, I think a lot of the times you'll do well. I don't want to overpay for keys, but I think if you're really worried about the money aspect of collecting, you start collecting some of the bigger books. I think that's where the value is. But if we're just talking about throwing around money, I don't want to see anybody leave our hobby. I don't want to see anybody out there go and put money towards some of these books that aren't really worth anything down the line. I see a lot of people pay up for books that maybe they couldn't secure on a Wednesday, on a new comic book day, and then they're spending almost tenfold to get that book on eBay and then a month later the book is worth nothing. Same with exclusives, same with all that type of jargon where people think they're getting a ton of money invested in their collection and they're absolutely getting not. They're being lied to by other people in the community. Enough said guys, start buying books that really have value and we're talking about history in comics. At the top spot and the biggest thing that annoys me in comic book collecting is this, overpriced comic book dealers or sellers. Now, it doesn't have to be dealers at a big show. It could be your fellow comic book collector. It could be your LCS or anyone selling comics. If you're grossly overpriced, man, it is the biggest turnoff there is. A lot of the times, I will not even look at your page when you post something. If it's on Instagram, I won't go by your booth when I'm at a show. I won't go to the LCS if it's at a local shop. I cannot stand when someone is grossly overpriced on selling comics. You have to be up to date on what your comics are worth, in my opinion. So with that said, I do understand that certain dealers and sellers, they're underwater from 2020, 2021. But if you really want to move books, you have to be close to the last sale or the 90-day average on GPA or whatever you use to price your books. If you're ridiculously overpriced, I usually just move on to the next booth or I don't go back to the LCS. With that also said, when I go to a show, I actually, if I'm looking for a certain book and I see a slab, I'll go compare that slab price to what it says on GPA, either the last sale or the 90 day, because I'll use both. And I'll try to use an average of both if they're really far apart. But uh, if the, the 90 day and the last sale are generally close and they're right around there, or maybe a little bit more because they want to meet at that price, I'm totally fine with it. And I know that you're a good dealer. If I see a book priced 30 to 50% over the current value of the book, I know I'm not even coming back to your booth 
roof next time. So that is the biggest thing that I cannot stand in our community because I actually want to buy books. And if you're not there to actually sell books and you just want to keep books on the wall and say, hey, look what I got. Or maybe I have a book on the wall and I'm trying to sell it to someone who doesn't really know the prices where they are today. That to me is just awful. And it's in the biggest disappointment I have in our community. All right, so that's it for this video. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this one, but hey, I'm ready for it. With that said, I want you guys to look forward to the things that I actually love about comic book collecting. So stay tuned for that one. Of course, I want to hear what you guys think. Do you have other things in this hobby that you really can't stand? I really love to hear it down below. With that said, this is Lawrence over at Mighty Comics and Collectibles saying thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon.